Hi everyone. It's Natalie here and um, I thought I would share my Tetragrammaton spread for this week. Um, I have been doing them and not remembering to share them because I got distracted by the 31 days of tarot. <laughs> I think like a lot of us did. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to share it. So here is what I had written up um, originally for the Tetragrammaton spread. There is a really good in-depth, in-detail um, version of this on Dropbox. In fact, I'm going to pull out got this handy dandy tarot journal here where I keep things that are printed where I need to have them printed out and stuff. So yeah, I don't know how well this is going to even come across. Yeah, we can kind of see it. So we've got this part of it. It's got all of this stuff here on, you know, here's the, the spreads. Um, and yeah, there's this big long write-up here about Tetragrammaton. Yeah, and all the different positions. So I figured I'll go ahead and just read some of that while we're while I'm drawing them. Um, and first, before I start, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Oh, look what happened to my decks. I'm also going to draw a card from the Oracle of Initiation by Melissa Lucia, because this is another big part of my path work this year. It's working with this deck, um, working with both of her decks actually, but um, first we wanna find, oh, sorry about all the movement. First we wanna find the High Priestess as a significator. Naturally, she's buried. There she is. Okay, so we recognize the High Priestess as the significator of this spread. So we're hoping to draw back some intuitive wisdom that can be embodied, that comes directly from the abyss. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle. In fact, I'll do that off camera and I'll come back. So the first card in the spread is, <clears throat> as you can see, ta-da, Yod is the Nine of Wands, or sorry, the Nine of Swords. Second card is the Cups, or Hey One. And in this position we have the Eight of Discs. Okay, so in the swords pile, we have the Ten of Swords. So clearly something needs to be let go of or released. And finally, in the Pentacles pile, we have the Eight of Wands. Okay, so very interesting. So in the Wands um, position, we have a sword. It's the Nine of Swords, the key word for which I have um, given <clears throat> um, exalted return. In the Cups pile, interestingly, there's a disc. So it's the Eight of Discs. And I think of this one as Peaceful Coexistence. Um, I have another one for that, don't I? Yeah, Purity of Heart. Purity of Heart or Peaceful Coexistence. Peaceful Coexistence is the one that I've been working with most recently. You know, if you have these sort of two lions inside of yourself that are fighting, um, or two forces coming together that, that may not be calm, holding that peace inside of yourself is, is really crucial. Uh, and then in the swords 
position we have another sword. So we've got two swords, one pentacle and one wand. No cups this week. Um, in the swords pile we have the ten of swords. And I, I have given that the, the um, keyword as fet. And that came out with a lot more air than I intended because I'm... <laughs> Top is like right over where my mouth is when I'm sitting here. Let me see if I can get a better one. Fet. Right, so it's you know, fet to cut things off. You know, take that scythe and cut them right off because they're done. And you know, the writer's gonna move on right immediately after that, you know, cutting off. And then, you know, for the final one, I have you know, in the oh, in the sword in the pentacles pile. You know, we have the Eight of Swords, which um, I've given the keywords, trust the process. So as I'm looking at this, this I've got um, Exalted Return, um, Peaceful Coexistence, Fet, and Trust the Process. So let's find out what that really means. <laughs> know what that means for myself um oh lord yeah this is why keywords are so critical if you're going to use a deck for yourself right if you study the cards you study their meanings you study the intent that the um deck creator has for them having those keywords is just it's an it's an instant in it can ground your your reading with it instantly so you know let's see position one the first letter y or yod is the uh, it's the furthest to the right, represents the element of fire in the suit of wands. So it's about our passions, our spirit, our motivations, our desires, and our intuition on the path. So it holds powerful clues about the kinds of gifts that may lie within the abyss, waiting to be retrieved and integrated so that we are able to reach our potential. So I'm going to say, um, with that said, yeah, intuition on the path, an exalted return. So I'm going to say that this is going to represent for me some kind of return to, um, yeah, like remembering, but from a better place, like a, more, a stronger place, remembering what my motivate, what, what, oh, what inspired me, you know, to take the path that I'm on in the first place and put me back in touch with what my motivations are, um, you know, how I, how I embody that, how I, you know, how I intuit around it, how I look at it. Um, and it's going to take me to a much higher place in my own practice. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it makes sense to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if it does or not. Um, yeah. Then if we look at position two, so the second letter, and that's this disc card, this eight of discs. Um, let's see. It represents the element of water in the suit of cups. This position represents our heart, our emotions and emotional state, our relationships and the feelings and emotions that may come up as we approach the abyss retrieve the treasures from it and attempt to integrate them into our lives. That's so interesting because I do often feel a lot of conflict about stuff like that. Um, and making peace with, 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 you know, op opposing ideas is, is hard for me sometimes. Um, I'm also working right now with a client couple. Um, and they're, they're much older um, one of them has Alzheimer's and the other one is in total denial about the state of their, their beloved's, um, health and, and mind. And so I often find that I have to peacefully coexist between the two of them while this is happening, you know, while one of them is, is acting and the other one is reacting, which is what this feels like. Um... So I feel like this is about grounding my emotions this week, um, finding inner, you know, an inner sense of stability and anchoring so that whatever, whatever things come up, 
you know, in my work and, and in what I'm doing, I'm able to just hold space for it. Um, so interesting to me that this, yeah, there's a lot in this, folks. There's so much here. I'm going to just kind of touch on this because I'll, I'll probably need to journal about it quite a bit later. Um, let's see. Position three, the third letter. Uh, let's see. That's the suit of air or suit of swords and element of air. So this position represents the state of our mind, our thoughts, our beliefs, and the conflicts that may come up as we approach the bit, the abyss, retrieve the treasures from it and attempt to integrate them into our lives. So yeah, I can tell I'm going to need to put a stop to certain ways of thinking. Yeah, that, I mean, do you see how these are weaving together? We have this exalted return that's saying like, okay, what are the things that you're coming back to? Um, let's see, what did we have? The gifts that lie there, you know, our passions, our spirit motivations, desires, right, is here. Then this one is talking or speaking to um, the heart, our emotions, etc. So if I'm coming back and making an exalted return to revisiting what it is that I care about, um, what motivates me in my work, why that matters, I'm going to need to keep a pure heart and learn to peacefully coexist with any conflict. And I think that's, you know, I think it's safe to say it's internal or external um, that comes up. So I need to be very emotionally grounded and solid. And it may also be that, you know, my mind I may, I may uncover, you know, through this process, some really unhelpful ways of thinking about things that I need to put a stop to, you know, that, that I may be self-defeating. Um, I mean, what else could that represent? Um, conflicts, yeah. Yeah, conflicts that come up. So just maybe putting the kibosh on those conflicts. Just stop. And get, a, get away from it. Take a step back. Um, and then this one really makes good sense to me. Um, position four, the fourth letter, which is hey or H2. It's the element of earth and the suit of pentacles. So this position represents material reality and the way in which our efforts are presently manifesting in the world around us. So this tells me that they're still manifesting. Um... They're still coming to fruition. They're still making themselves known. I haven't really, you know, it's so, oh, it's so interesting. You know, I haven't really manifested anything just yet. Um, but what I need to do in lieu of that is, is to trust the process around it. Trust the process around it. Um, wow. It's almost like a nesting doll. You know, you start with one and the other ones kind of unfold out of it. So I'd also like to just draw a, a card from the Oracle of Initiation. I like having an Oracle deck that, that just kind of helps me get a sense of what it is I'm working with. What are those energies? You know, this isn't so much predicting my, my week as it is really kind of telling me where am I on my path? You know, what is it that I'm trying to work with or integrate on my path? All right, I'm going to shuffle these and I'll come right back. Okay, as usual, <laughs> as usual, um, something very deep came up from the depths here. So we have the card unconscious. It's number six. All right. And as always, um, <clears throat> I've got my, <laughs> I've got my handy guidebook um, full of marks and um, flags and so forth. So let's have a look at what unconscious means. Eek, come up. I'm having a terrible time picking up cards today. Okay, so it comes from the Alliance of Innocence, and another key word for this is shrouded trance. Um, the fears and shadows you have suppressed have the ability to become your radiant brilliance if you shine a light into their veiled existence. These hidden aspects of your soul are your treasures waiting to be claimed. Embracing your rainbows in the dark illuminates the pathway out of your shrouded trance of unconsciousness. 
exploring the depths of your unrealized shadowed alliances is the gateway to your true awakening. Find the courage to embrace the unknown aspects of yourself, releasing these fertile chambers of inspiration. So this is deep, folks. This speaks to a lot of what's come up this week um, about... There's so much more. There's like another... That was just this far. Let's see. There's another like two whole pages here of really deep, you know, deep stuff to work with. Um, wow. So, yeah, this tells me that whatever, you know, this exalted return, I mean, it, this is always a result of conflict in swords, isn't it? So, you know, there's there's times of stability, times of conflict, and an exalted return back up to, you know, the higher self. What is it that motivates us? What is it that makes us want to do what we do? And it's a perfect card to have in that position. Um, and then emotionally finding a way to be at peace and peacefully coexist with any kind of inner conflict that I'm finding. And then, yeah, you know, this one is speaking to having, this feels to me like, yeah, there could be some dark stuff that comes up this week that's pretty heavy and pretty thick, and I'll need to make some choices about cutting things off putting a stop to certain things, letting go of things in order to reclaim, you know, reclaim the beauty and the power that comes out of the depths, you know, and I'm being asked to trust the process. Really to trust the process. There's something bigger than me that's motivating and, and shifting things along. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. And, um, Again, all of the links will be in, in the description box. All right, take care, and thank you for sharing this with me. Bye.